Well, biologics are, are a class of medications that are produced from living cells, um, living cells that have been genetic, had their DNA genetically altered to produce a particular compound, um, usually a large protein that's um, used to target a specific disease, as opposed to traditional medications, which are just chemically synthesized from non-living material. The most severe conditions um, under the Earth's basically is being, are being um, treated by biological molecules. So we have basically a standard litany of things that have been very advanced. So for example, a lot of the cancers. So we have brain cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer, lung. Um, those are major big problems for our public health systems. Um, these are being effectively treated by biologics as well. Other kinds of very difficult diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, as well as the different kinds of anemia all of these are now being treated um, by biologic medicines. And that's roughly about 200 to 300 molecules right now um, in the biologic world. We have another four to 600 that are going to be um, on the plate right now in terms of being um, assessed, researched. And these are going to actually treat a much wider array of things, everything from HIV to Parkinson's. Uh, chemical drugs are produced by a mechanical or chemical process that does not involve the use of living cells. Therefore, chemical drug manufacturing is more predictable and it is easier to get uniform results. Biologics um, are made by a totally different process. They're made from living cells that have been genetically engineered to mass produce a specific protein. So it's a much larger molecule because it's made from a living system. It's a much more complex system. There's a lot more variables that are involved in um, producing the medication. Biologic manufacturers must create environments for cells to produce exactly the right protein every time. This process helps to ensure that biologic medicines are as uniform as possible, act as intended, and ultimately benefit the patients for whom they are being developed. If they're not done correctly, if the, the drugs aren't tested appropriately, they're seen as invaders. So they're so large that the body starts to react against the actual biologic drug itself. Now, that's bad because it's a big time allergic reaction to a patient. We've actually put these things into their bodies using IV fluids or whatever, huge problem. But the secondary problem that's even worse is that sometimes the immune reaction of our bodies against these drugs are so great, we start reacting against the natural products in our bodies. Biologics actually are very well regulated for safety. Um, for example, a traditional biologics molecule is probably going to have to go through between four and five additional tests compared to, say, the small little molecules, solid molecules. In addition, they also have to go through um, kind of test tube testing, animal testing, and then three rounds of clinical trials in human beings. In, in addition, after that, even after the drug's been approved, there's something called post-market surveillance. Drug companies are required to assess their safety of their drugs after they've been approved. Uh, biosimilars are an effort to try to make quote-unquote generics out of these very large protein products, these very large, complicated biologics. Now, in the world of small chemicals, like the pills that we get, um, these are, again, you put them into a flask, you spin them around, you let the chemical reactions occur, and you make the drug. And literally, generics of these small pills are identical. Biologics are made from living cells and complex biologic systems where the, there's a lot of other variables that are involved. And so it's almost impossible, and they're also much larger mo molecules, so it's almost impossible to um, create an exact duplicate of that molecule. And under the new healthcare reform bill that we have passed, there was a brief, an abbreviated pathway to allow these biosimilars to be approved. So there's a tremendous challenge for us to make sure that when, as this comes through the policy pipeline, we make sure that patient safety comes out first. It's still up in the air in, in the United States of what we, what we are going to do in terms of um, approving biosimilars. Every situation is different. How patients respond to medication is different. Um, I think that really the only person um, or people who are in a position to make that call are the 
physician who's taking care of that patient and the patient themselves. The law permits the FDA to develop guidelines for declaring biosimilars interchangeable but the law does not require that the FDA develop any guidelines before it begins approving biosimilars as interchangeable. The FDA has the power to say these two drugs are interchangeable. The difficulty is that we don't know what the requirements are going to be with respect to how the FDA determines that. Again, patients and physicians have to really take note and pay attention to this. Should the FDA decide to develop guidelines the law requires that the public have an opportunity to provide input. First, states may determine whether or not a pharmacist can substitute a biosimilar for a prescribed biologic without the consent of a doctor. State laws vary about whether a pharmacist can substitute small synthesized uh, molecule pills without doctor consent. States may need to make new laws and regulations that, that apply to biologics, and it is unclear at this point how they will address interchangeable biosimilars. Another role for states is determining which biosimilars will be covered under state-sponsored health care plans, such as Medicaid. Oh, no question. I mean, as a cancer patient, I'm tremendously excited about the potential that these drugs have. Um, but the first and foremost focus has to be patient safety. Um, as myself, as a patient safety guy, and I direct the Center for Patient Safety at University of California, San Diego, uh, our focus has always been, it doesn't matter what the regulatory approach is, it doesn't matter what the technology is, safety has to come first. Any um, rules or laws that are created by the FDA need to be very um, cognizant of that, you need to be very aware of how difficult it is to recreate those um, systems and how difficult it is to just substitute another similar type medication for it. Patients and doctors have a critical role to play in the development of these guidelines, and we will need to make sure that they are the ultimate decision makers about what treatment options are the most effective and safest for patients.